Hey, what's up guys? It's Lucas and welcome back to my channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please take a second and hit the subscribe button and you can also click the little bell there next to it if you want to get notifications about when I post new videos. Today we're going to talk about playing in stereo with the Line 6 Helix. Um, this stuff applies to kind of real life gear too as well, um, but in this case I'm talking about the Helix because that's generally what I use. Disclaimer, this is just three different ways that I go about playing in the stereo format. These are not the only ways to do it, obviously. There's a billion different permutations of how you can do it. And these are just ways that I like to play in stereo, and I think they sound pretty cool. So, you know, take this for what you will. What I'm going to do here is show you three different ways that you can kind of get that effect with the Helix. So, what you heard in there in the beginning is what I would call, like, the David Gilmore, Andy Timmons method of playing in stereo. Um, so this is kind of a post-stereo method. So I'm just using an amp model, uh, in this case we're using the Plexi BRT or Plexi Bright channel. And I've got an impulse response on here, this is my kind of custom impulse response, which I will put a link to in the description if you want to download it, it's a really cool one. It's a mixture of uh, greenbacks and vintage 30s and I think it sounds really good. And then, so that's going along our normal pathway here, and then we split it into two different pathways, and both of them have a delay on them, these are both transistor tape kind of echoplex type delays, right? And then after each delay, it goes out to our XLR outs, which are going into my interface, and they are panned hard left and hard right. All right, now that's important. If you pan the stuff hard left and hard right, that's where you're gonna get the maximum stereo effect. So this delay here is only going to be coming out of the left side, and this delay is only gonna be coming out of the right side. That's important. If you have them running down the center, you know, or, or less than full left and right, it's going to lessen that stereo effect, which may be what you want, but if you want the full stereo width, you want to go hard left and hard right. So that's kind of an important rule to all the stereo stuff, hard left, hard right, or pretty close to it. So if we take the delay off, you're going to hear the guitar straight down the middle, as it were, just sounds like this. wrong with that. That's a really good, nice, martial, kind of bitey guitar sound. And if you're playing with another guitar player, that might be all you need. Because if you're playing with another guitar player, you're going to get kind of a stereo effect anyway if you're both playing the same kind of thing. And so this will be sort of lost. So that's something you can kind of apply to all of this. If you're uh, playing with another guitar player, sometimes with a keyboard or something like that, the more stuff that you add into the band, the less noticeable, less useful stereo is as a technique. So now, if I turn on just I believe this would be the left delay, right? You can hear the echo there. That's cool. it's kind of like semi-stereo. Turn on the right delay. So what I've done, and like I said, this is kind of a David Gilmore, Andy Timmons type thing, uh, is the left delay I have set on for quarter notes. So my tap tempo is going like that, right? And then my right delay is set for dotted eighth notes. So here's our quarter note delays. Two, three, four, one, two, three, right? And then here's our dotted eighth delays. Now, when you put both of those on, you get kind of a pinging back and forth effect. Because of the way quarter notes and dotted eighths work. It's almost got a like a rhythmic kind of drum thing going on, which is a really cool effect. So then to take it a step further, what I do in these, because these are kind of like echoplex type, you know, tape delay sounds, is I go and I crank this wow and flutter knob, which just kind of lets the delay decay and modulate and get a little gross sounding as it goes on. And that is going to give you kind of a, a chorusing effect on the delays. So 
if I turn the delay wow and flutter off, you're gonna hear just kind of like a straight bouncing delay, which still sounds good. And this kind of thing is gonna be particularly noticeable when you're actually playing and not just letting the delays ring out. fills it up, but if I go and crank that wow and flutter, now what you're going to get is that kind of decaying modulation sound, and as you're playing notes, it's going to really be chorusing against the guitar sound that you're already playing. So that sounds like this. So you can hear that gives it kind of a chorus effect and that gives you a really nice stereo kind of washing halo sound around the guitar notes. And I really like this a lot, it's one of my favorite ways to play in stereo. Technically this is not true stereo, but it is a stereo effect. And so the thing that I like about this particular method is that you still get essentially a clean guitar straight down the middle and then what you get is kind of a stereo halo effect on left and right and it kind of just makes everything a little bit bigger. So this is great for lead guitar sounds. In fact, most of the time when I play lead guitar, now that I've got this Helix where I don't have to have a whole bunch of pedals and stuff, uh, I like to have this kind of set up. Whether I'm playing with another guitar player or not, it's just nice to have. Um, so that's kind of a basic way of playing with the delay stereo thing. So now let's move on to the next one. Now this is what I would call a doubling effect. So when you track guitar in the studio now, kind of modern guitar tracking in the studio, almost always you're double tracking. So if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, it basically it's you play whatever your guitar riff is, you know, let's... And then if you double track it, play the guitar exact same thing twice, as close to the original as you can, you get something sort of like this. Right? That's really not the best tone for that. <laughs> anyway, so that's the kind of effect. So you can sort of simulate this doubling effect, which doubling, when you play the same thing twice, as close as you can, even though it's, I mean, the same thing and you're trying to do it as close as you can to the original, the way that your hands work, the way that the human body works, you just can't get it exactly perfect. Because if you got it exactly perfect, it would make it just louder and down the center, right? But if you play the same thing twice and it's just the tiniest, tiniest bit different, um, then you get this wide two guitar player effect because you are essentially serving as two guitar players. So you can sort of faux mimic this with a delay sound. So in this case, I'm using a simple delay, which is just a basic kind of digital delay, real clean, just want an exact reproduction of the sound. You can do this with other things, but I think it works the best this way. So the trick is you wanna have a really, really short time. In this case, I'm using 25 milliseconds I don't know that I would go any more than that and probably not any less than like around 20 or something because then it's going to kind of start to get a little weird hollow phase thing going on. Um, somewhere in that vicinity, and this is important, zero feedback so you don't want any repeats. And then you want the mix to be 100%. And this delay only goes on one side of your stereo path. So again here I've got my amp, I've got my delay on one side going into one of these impulse responses and the other one is just the straight impulse response. These are exactly the same, all right? And then split left and right there at the end. And then the delay is just going to delay one side of it by 25 milliseconds and you're only gonna hear the delayed signal. 
So what that gives you is that kind of doubling effect as if you were playing the guitar twice and one of your tracks was like 25 milliseconds off. So this is another good way to get that big stereo sound. So without it, So again, there's nothing wrong with that guitar sound. It's a good guitar sound. So if I turn on the delay to get this doubling effect, then you get this. Here I kind of just widens it out a little bit. It basically takes what's a mono guitar signal and just splits it time-wise so that it's just a little bit late on one side and that gives you that delay sound. And then the last one I'm going to show you here is what I would call like true stereo. So true stereo would be running two entirely different guitar paths. So I'm sort of fudging it a little bit here but this is going to be pretty much the same thing as true stereo. In fact, we'll, we'll change it just a little bit just to mix it up some. But, okay, so on one guitar path, I have a chorus, a 70s chorus, and we've got our Brit Plexi Bright model, and then we've got that impulse response there, all right? And on the other guitar path, I have a flanger, the gray flanger, that same amp, but I've turned the gain down, and let's turn the treble down and presence down. Just give it a different sound. Um, it'll be the pretty, still pretty similar as the same amp. Um, and then, again, same impulse response. Panned hard, left and right. Now, if I, even if I turn the modulation off here, technically we're still playing in true stereo because there are two different amp sounds happening. It's not going to sound hugely stereo because it's the same amp and there's not any time-based or modulation stuff happening, which is really where the maximum stereo effect comes in. But even as it is, it's still gonna, you'll hear a stereo effect. And part of the stereo effect there you're gonna hear is that one amp is a little bit louder than the other because I messed with the gain. Let's see if I can balance that out here. So that's kind of a stereo sound there, like the amp on the right is, or my right at least, is a little cleaner sounding, it's darker and cleaner, and the one on the left is brighter and more distorted. So then you can turn on the chorus on the left side. That's already an interesting stereo sound because your ears naturally will pick up like, hey, something's different on that side. All right, and then if I turn on the flanger, turn off the chorus, you can just hear the flanger on the right side. All right, that's a cool stereo sound too. And then when you turn on both of them, you've got Two different amp sounds, two different modulation effects, left and right, and you get a big washy kind of Alex Lifeson sound. And 
And I realize that that's not the best way to go about it, but I'm just kind of trying to demonstrate what you can do with it here. So that's the true stereo path where you can have two entirely different signal chains. And then really, no matter what you do with them, as long as they're a little bit different, technically you're running in stereo. The more things you add and kind of change with time base and modulation, the more dramatic the stereo effect becomes. Um, but sometimes you don't want it to be super dramatic. So let's recap. We've got our stereo delay sound. Is that nice Andy Timmons thing? We've got our stereo double effect. So if we want, you know, this is great for riffy stuff. All right. Then we've got true stereo, where we're running two entirely different signal paths. So what if we combine all of the above? Because we're guitar players and we're definitely going to combine all of the above. So what I have here is all the stereo. So this is run two separate stereo paths. I've got those modulations. I have my doubling effect on one side. And then I've got stereo delays. Same kind of thing. And then going in the impulse response. So now you have maximum awesome stereo sound. It sounds like this. So that is huge sounding, and especially when I'm coming through my studio monitors right now, but especially when you run through some FRFR cabs, or if you're running through it at power amps or whatever, however you do it, if you do it where it's big and loud, and you move the cabs or monitors apart from each other so you have some kind of actual physical space, um, then it's going to just envelop you, which is awesome. It's the coolest thing once you get it going right. Um, and I find that this is particularly useful, this kind of sound, when you're playing like big six string kind of chords and not playing super, super distorted. Um, the more distorted you play with this stuff, the kind of less noticeable it is to a certain extent because um, you're not really getting all the cool kind of resonant harmonic stuff that the guitar will do when you can let those notes all shine through. I mean, it depends on how you set your tone. Again, this is all opinion, so just you know, bear with me. But um, I think that's great for that kind of, you know, 80s Alex Lifeson or even, you know, kind of Van Halen sort of stuff where he was getting more into like what I think what he calls the Jape sound. Um, so to me, like when I think of that, I think of like, uh, <clears throat> like that 5150 kind of town. 5150 the album, not the amp. like 
crank the gain up on these amps and get some cool kind of stuff going on. Um, like uh, OU812 kind of. Uh There you go. There's three different ways that you can kind of add stereo sounds to your Helix or really any other kind of amp setup, but the Helix is how I'm doing it here. And then when you combine all that stuff in the end, you get a really big, massive kind of stereo sound. Uh, I think it all kind of works together nicely and it creates this giant enveloping kind of lush guitar sound. So like I said, this is more useful the less instruments that are going on, the more prevalent it becomes. So if you have like another guitar player and a keyboardist and a horn section and you know bass and drums and all that kind of stuff then it's maybe not as useful as if you're playing guitar bass drums and you're the only guitar player <laughs> um, but you know kind of pick and choose what it is that you like to use and where it's appropriate and this can really add just that extra little like five percent to your sound to give you just that little bit of whatever it is that you need to make the guitar sound bigger and more lively so anyway I hope this has been helpful and useful for you um, <laughs> it was a lot of fun for me to do. So anyway, I will I will play you out here with uh, I'm gonna add in some boost to just really make it scream. Turning up the overdrive. All right. And I have been Lucas, and until next time, I will catch you later. <laughs>